Good evening, everyone. Time for another Bitcoin report. This is the one hour feed of Mt. Gox provided by ClarkMoody.com. We're going to go to Bitcoin Wisdom to do the technical analysis, but I wanted you to see the market depth here. We're talking about 27,000 Bitcoins total offered on Mt. Gox. That's a significant drop if you remember the last time we were looking at about 35,000. So the point we were looking at last time was 10,000. Now we're at 12,000 at 650. We were 10,000 at 500. So this is a big increase. You can see that the equivalent 12,000 here is all the way up at 1,200. So big rally going on. And the theme here is going to be that Bitcoin is in its infancy. Now let's jump over to BitcoinWisdom.com. We had a big rally in uh, BTC China. Now, if you follow the blog, I had posted a chart when Bitcoin crossed 800 in China. It actually broke 800 in China before it broke 800 on these other exchanges. Now, these the other big story that I covered was that these exchanges have begun to normalize here. You can see 930 on Gox. Let's do a refresh. We've got 937 on Gox, 929 on Bitstamp, 907 on BTCE. Now, if you remember, that used to be a more than a hundred dollar difference, and 941 on BTC China. So, BTC China seems to be in the lead here, and if you go to the Fiat Leak site and watch the coins flowing. Uh, they're flowing into China and they're flowing into the United States and that's not it, it seems to be coins flowing into those nations but what it really is is the currency of the nation flowing into Bitcoin that's what it means at Fiat Leak but you can see here an interesting formation that we have on BTC China and we actually have a cross now on this four hour chart very bullish on low volume. Now the overhead resistance that we're looking at here is significant because you can see this big sell spike that we had that's a big volume that's going to be the major overhead players. This period here from about we're going to have to quote it in uh, Chinese currency but from about 57.95 Chinese to 7,000 there and about 52 to about 75 those two periods of, of sustained buying we'll call it are going to be the overhead resistance in China now you can see we've worked up to this level here so we're about a third of the way through the original overhead resistance and we're barely approaching this overhead resistance about halfway up this red selling line so we have worked off a lot of resistance and you can see we have this spike rally so we're going to be watching this very closely we're trying to get to that thousand point and you can see uh, actually it's not on here but we went past 960 in China so very very bullish now let's get to the main theme here and that's going to be that Bitcoin is actually in its infancy now let's start off with this. We have a comment on a Simpsons episode. Now that may seem unimportant to many people, but there are a lot of memes that are in that show. And go ahead and watch that. There's a mention of Bitcoin with Krusty the Clown. Remember, this is just beginning to seep into the consciousness. Now let's look at Zero Hedge. This is a search from google.com I did a direct search on zero hedge but it wasn't in dated order so when I went and searched for Bitcoin on zero hedge on Google we got this Bitcoin tag on the site and you can see here are the stories here we've got one from today which is gold and silver play catch up but Bitcoin is the keyword interesting Bitcoin derivatives market has arrived one from yesterday. Bitcoin crashes, loses half its value from the 7th. Bitcoin slammed Baidu from the 6th. 
Bitcoin is sliding from the sixth. Bitcoin mentioned in front running. Very interesting. Uh, potato juice, whatever that is, Bitcoin is mentioned. City, Bitcoin could lock, look attractive to reserve managers. That's from the 5th of December. Another one from the 5th of December with the Tesla bot with Bitcoin. Another one from the 5th of December, Bitcoin cost benefit analysis. And uh, another one about China. Another one about Bank of America. Uh, Bitcoin mentioned in the Draghi article. Bitcoin tumbles after cent uh, Chinese Central Bank and uh, one on government corruption. So let's go to the last here. This is just to show you that Zero Hedge has reluctantly covered Bitcoin. You can see back, and this is going to be the oldest that we have here on this. You can see 1025, a mention in October, one in about a few weeks later in November, and then we start to get that. So the meme is starting to flow and that's going to be very important when we look at the understanding of how these markets grow. Now this video here is a video from World Bitcoin Network. You can see it has 35,000 views. It should really have 35 million views. But it is a video about S-curves and how they work. So let's watch a little bit of this. I highly recommend this video. But Twitter's a great service, right? They're using it on the front lines for news, etc. But the key thing here again is it started in 2006. It had its vertical moment in 2010, even 2011, right? It's still increasing pretty dramatically, but it's also got a gestation time, and this is very important, of about four to five years. Okay, so even though Twitter's a great idea and Facebook's a great idea and Google ran through the same curve, right? Even though they're great ideas, they take a number of years to develop and for a tech company, it seems like if you've got an awesome idea, it takes four to five years to really explode. But what's key here is that if we're talking about Twitter and Facebook and even if we throw in Google, which followed the exact same curve before its IPO in 2004, what we're seeing is that these are three very, very simple ideas, right? Google's just a space, right? You type in and you find what you want. And that took years for the public to really get used to it and want to use it. Twitter, you type in 140 characters, right? And you send it to the world. It's as simple as can be. And again, even that took years to catch on. Now everybody loves it. These are networks that are being developed, right? You can't receive a Twitter unless you have some Twitter, right? And networks are faddish and they're population-based and they're news-based, but they take a while to grow. Facebook's the same. Well, you're starting to make some analogies to what we mostly talk about which is Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin, you can't put on the same graph because again, if it's a tech thing, it's only been around four and a half years. So Bitcoin, we can only draw it maybe up to here. Okay, so it's been around four and a half years. It would be unfair to put it out here because it's had no IPO. Of course, it'll never have an IPO or as some people have suggested that the IPO was on day one. But Bitcoin started in January of 2009. So what is that? That's almost five years. So it's about 4.5 to five years ago. And, you know, if you compare, here's 18 billion for Twitter. So let's divide that up into six. I don't know. Here's 3 billion, which is where Bitcoin is today, right? And Bitcoin's doing pretty much the same thing. Okay. Okay. So when people say so I'll let you listen to the rest of that. It's absolutely a brilliant analysis. Very important point you need to take away that he makes is that the phenomenal growth, the exponential growth stage that occurred in these ideas, and that's what he's arguing Google and Twitter and Facebook really are is a simple idea. And you'll see later that he explains that Bitcoin is so much more than that. But the time period when they went into their exponential growth was actually a time period when they were controlled by insiders and venture capital. And that means that that growth period, which is normal for any astounding idea, 
wasn't visible to the public because the way that the markets work is that they're IPO'd after they've gone through this S curve. So I really recommend, highly recommend you watching this entire video. This is brilliant. And again, this is more proof that Bitcoin is in its infancy. I believe that Bitcoin is actually down here before the S even starts to turn up. I think that when Bitcoin goes strongly into four digits, then we're going to be talking about the beginning of this S growth. And I think the fact that Zero Hedge, now remember, Zero Hedge is a leading light in all things economic. Uh, this is a site that breaks new economic stories. There's a lot of gold bugs and silver bugs and they really hate Bitcoin on this site. So Zero Hedge is just now getting into the Bitcoin story. Again, we had the mention on The Simpsons. That's very important. That's a cultural meme. Now I wanted to take you over to the cryptocurrency market cap. Now I've covered this a number of times because it's important to remember that the market cap of all the cryptocurrencies is so tiny. Now when I first covered Litecoin, when I posted a chart of the technical breakout through that $10 mark, Litecoin was just a fraction of this. It was less than a third of this and now it's uh, moving towards that billion dollar market cap. PureCoin is still way behind it. We have had a rally in QuarkCoin which really surprised me. I thought QuarkCoin would sink and uh, maybe I'm wrong on that. I don't like anything that's 98 percent pre-mined or if it's not pre-mined I don't like something where all the coins are already out there but that doesn't mean that it can't work. If the cryptocurrency is solid if it can't be broken and this is a really important point with Bitcoin when we're talking about the ability to transact when we're talking about the ability to send money when we're talking about the ability to defeat capital controls it doesn't matter what the price is Bitcoin goes out eight digits it can go out more others can go out more the point is is that they function for what they were designed to do. Price is just a measure of the public's confidence in this technology. And again, this technology is in its infancy right now. It's at the beginning of the S-curve. I believe that Bitcoin is going to move a hundredfold from here. I think that a trillion dollar market cap for Bitcoin is not unreasonable at all. So let's get back to the price action. The action has started in China and I think it's going to continue in China. China is leading the way and a lot of people were very taken aback by the news out of China but actually I think that it was a fairly responsible thing similarly to what happened in the United States the government is responsible for money laundering regulations although I don't agree with the premise behind that of course but nevertheless the governments are responsible for that and especially they're responsible for losses that the banks take they have to step up and at least give some guidance I think the guidance that the Chinese government gave was that they're going to be hands off if you if you take your losses in Bitcoin they're going to be yours and yours alone now I know that more than anyone else I've lost more Bitcoins from theft than I would like to think about but uh, that's just the way it goes I've learned a lot about security I've learned a lot about two-factor authentication I've learned a lot about offline wallets and all kinds of other things that I never would have learned without losing a tremendous amount of money. So I'm sure there's a lot of people like me out there who've done the same thing and I think that's a good thing. I think it's a good thing because if you look at the banks right now, I've done a number of wires in the past. I did some wires in my initial purchases of Bitcoin years ago from Mt. Gox and 
I had to jump through a million hoops to wire money there and I've wired money to my brokerage account uh, just a standard stock brokerage TD Ameritrade account and the last few times I've wired money there I actually had to go in person into the bank and show my identity and authenticate that I was indeed wiring money now I raised a big stink when I went in after the third time I believe it was the same thing happened to me I'd go online I'd wire money to my stock account or another account my account would be frozen I couldn't do anything I'd have to drive into the bank meet with the guy at the branch now at one point one of the guys in the branch whose wife is a big person on the security team for this bank and he told me that the reason why this is so strict is because the banks are getting hacked right and left and I think that's part of the reason why we're seeing these restrictions on money wires there are so many hackers breaking in so don't think that just because it's a bank it's not being hacked my understanding is that the hacking going on in the banking system right now is insane so overall I think it's good that people are learning to protect their bitcoins with multiple series of authentication and all kinds of protection because ultimately just like we found out with Detroit with the pensions going poof and we're gonna find out moving forward with a lot of things of paper promises going poof that ultimately you are responsible for protecting your own assets no one's gonna do it for you so in the long run I think this is a good thing so this is a big rally coming out of China right now you can see that technical crossover that we had here all the way out on the four hour and it's my opinion that China is leading the way we're looking for this green line to turn positive that's gonna take quite a bit of buying probably a rally all the way up over a thousand which again could happen tonight also this trend line coming down here I can't draw on this chart but I'm gonna estimate that about 6500 on the Chinese the BTC China exchange is going to be a breakout of this downtrend line I think if we get through 6500 in China and again I think China's leading the way right now you can see 941 higher than all the other US exchanges and foreign exchanges I think if China gets to that 6500 yuan price we're off to the races and it's on to 3000 and we'll talk to you next time